a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life in plastic. It's fantastic. Joke's on you. You thought I couldn't get any cringier in my intros? I can always get cringier, baby, okay? Cringe is my middle name. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie, and today we are finally watching Barbie. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and welcome if you're new. Today, we are diving on into Barbie the movie and I am very excited. I, of course, have heard great things about this movie. It was viral this summer. It blew up at the box office along with Oppenheimer. It was like the most successful box office weekend in a really long time. And I have just been patiently waiting to check out this movie. I've just been biding my time, waiting for it to be available on digital. It it actually was released to watch digitally a really long time ago, I think during the month of October or maybe late September even. But at that point, I was already starting to get into my spookier content, my nightmare focused content, and I didn't really want to throw Barbie into that mix because I wanted to really soak up Halloween, get in as many scary or fun horror comedy movies as I could get into. I didn't really want to throw Barbie into the mix because that would just dilute everything and mean that I would have one less fun movie for Nightmare Season. So I patiently waited and it's finally time. Nightmare Season is over and I can finally watch this movie. I'm pretty excited for this one. I've heard it's very deep, uh, very emotional, explores a lot of really interesting themes. I'm pretty sure there's a viral musical number from Ryan Gosling in this number, if I'm not mistaken, in this movie. I, I'm not really sure. I think I think he has a number as Ken, though, from what I've heard. I haven't listened to anything really from the movie. I haven't watched any trailers. I've really done a good job avoiding everything as I could for the most part. It's kind of tough when a movie blows up this much online because people are posting TikToks, clipping things from the movie. There's viral meme references everywhere. It's really hard to avoid spoilers and things from a movie that was this successful and widely watched and appreciated upon its release. I also know that Michael Sarah is in the movie, but I don't know what his role is. I just, I've seen photos of him in the movie. Um, I don't know what he does or what his part is like. I hope it's funny. I don't know. I'm excited. He's not somebody that I really would have expected to see in this movie. So I feel like it'll be a good time. I definitely do enjoy Margot Robbie, but I haven't really seen her in much because I've never really watched her do Harley Quinn or anything like that. I've seen her in some movies here here and there. You know, I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but she really didn't have like any speaking lines in that movie. So I'm really excited to see her in a movie where she's going to shine and really get to demonstrate her acting range. Fun fact about me as a kid, I was not really a Barbie girl. I was not really a fan of Barbies in general. I was kind of a nerdy kid. Like I wasn't your typical girly girl. I had my girly girl moments, you know, like I liked the color pink. I liked theater and I liked performing and singing and I liked dressing up sometimes, not even all the time, but just sometimes I did like dressing up and, you know, hanging posters of boy bands on my wall. Like I definitely had girly phases, but when it came to like playing with toys, I did not like dollhouses. I did not like Barbies. I didn't like any of that. I like to play with like little plastic dinosaurs and animals. Like truly, I was nerdy in that way. I like could name all of the scientific names for dinosaurs. I would play with dinosaurs. I would play with those little, those little figurines. They, they came, I don't know if they have them anymore, but they came in these like clear plastic tubes that were super cheap and you would get like 20 animals or something or maybe 20 dinosaurs or whatever. And it was just a random assortment and I would collect those. I liked that kind of stuff. That was more of my jam. So whenever I went over to a friend's house and they wanted to play Barbies, I was just kind of like not that into it. I never really got the Barbie hype as a kid. I didn't care. Even the Barbie aesthetic isn't really my cup of tea. Although I will say like from the stills and the imagery that I've seen from this movie, it seems like the sets and the costumes are just fantastic. So I am really excited to appreciate that and see what level of detail went into the making of the movie. Because even though I'm not necessarily a fan of the Barbie aesthetic, I mean, it is a really fun aesthetic. It's very playful, colorful, and like pretty and very unique too. Like I feel like you don't see a lot of movies with such a stylized, almost cartoon-like aesthetic with live action actors. So I'm really excited to see all these actors play around with this style and to see what like dramatic moments exist in the movie because I know there are people who cried. A lot of people were telling me it's like a lot heavier than you would expect. 
for me, it kind of makes a lot of sense because if it was just a surface level Barbie movie, why would anybody care? Um, so I'm really excited to see what things are explored in the story of this movie and in the character of Barbie. But that's all I really have to say for this intro. I'm just really excited to watch this movie with all of y'all finally and understand this iconic moment in cinema and pop culture. So without any further ado, I think it's time to grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into Barbie. No, just, okay, frick, no. Since the beginning of time. I feel like this is the beginning to 2001, A Space Odyssey. There have been dolls. Oh yeah, oh my God, this is but funny. the dolls were always and forever baby dolls. Uh-huh, until Barbie. What is this? All these girls alone out in the middle of nowhere. They're all in drab clothing. They all look so depressed and bored. This continued until is Barbie gonna come down from the sky? It is two, It is a reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh my God. I picked up on that so fast. Is she gonna break the toy? Ah! Oh my God. <laughs> oh Jesus. Wow. Guys, I picked up on a movie reference. Thanks to Barbie. This is a cute commercial. Problems of feminism and equal rights have, have been, been solved. <laughs> That's what they think. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. It's like a dollhouse. Oh, there's multiple musical numbers, huh? America Ferrera is in the movie? Wow, this cast is way more stacked than I realized. Oh, my God. Okay, this outfit's adorable. Issa Rae's in this too? Wow. Oh, Helen Mirren was the narrator. Will Ferrell? What? I had no, okay. I really only knew about Ryan Gosling, Margot Robbie, and Michael Sarah. This is amazing. I'm so excited. Oh my God, I'm nervous for when she's gonna crack. She can't really be happy. It's all a mask for yeah, sure. She was Barbie's pregnant friend. Oh. Let's not show me actually. She was discontinued by Mattel because a pregnant doll is just too weird. Oh, she was discontinued. Was that real? That's <laughs> hilarious. Are these all based off of real dolls? That's awesome. Reporter Barbie, you can ask me any question you want. Well, how come you're so amazing? <laughs> no comment. Ah! <laughs> How come you're so amazing? She's a president and like she's in the gown with a sash. I love you guys. I love you guys. Oh my God. I wonder how the men feel here. It was probably like 2.5 mm -hmm. of them. <laughs> it's a Mount Rushmore of Barbies and then Barbie land instead of Hollywood sign. Oh, Statue of Liberty, but it's Barbie. This is amazing. Day if Barbie looks at Oh, him. Ken. He's totally dependent on Barbie looking at him. Poor Ken. He probably doesn't have a lot of self-confidence. I can. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. I got us both ice cream. Cool. He doesn't care about any of the other Kens. He's like, shut up. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Maybe we should just never say hi. Hi, Barbie. Oh, hi, Alan. Alan, he's the most unique. He's so unique. Alan, you're a breath of fresh air, King. He's going to go surfing on the stagnant stationary wave. Oh, he's so nervous. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Does he try every day to do that? It never works. Oh, looks like this beach was a little too much beach for you, Ken. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beat you off right now. Beat you off? <laughs> I was gonna say like, there's a lot of like homosexual energy with the Kens, but now it's, now it's even more. Can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. <laughs> I don't have anything big planned, just a bespoke number. Oh my God. She must be exhausted. I'm like waiting for everything to crack. Like she can't be happy doing this every night. It's gotta be exhausting at some point. Man, I... It must have been like stressful working on the costume department for this, but at the same time, the most fun ever to pick outfits for people. Alan! I like Alan. I like Midge too. Midge, Midge seems like fun, even if she was discontinued. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. That Ken is putting in work too, huh? Or competing for that Barbie. <laughs> this other Ken just following him. <laughs> Ah! Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Barbie. 
Oh, everybody wants her attention. They just live for her attention because she's the main character. I mean, I'm never going to be upset about seeing Ryan Gosling dancing in a movie. He's such a fun dancer. The sparkles. Listen, they should just beat each other off already. They'd be a lot happier. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. And so is yesterday. And so is tomorrow. And so is tomorrow. And every day from now until forever. Wow, that sounds think about dying. exhausting. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Poor thing. I don't know why I just said that. Poor babe. I'm just dying to dance. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there's the mask. There's that mask slipping. I knew it was going to happen at some point. She did a great job there with like smiling, but having the fear in her eyes of like, wow, I can't even like express these thoughts here. I thought I might stay over. Mm -mm. Why? She said, oh, are we? To do what? I'm actually not sure. <laughs> Because they, they don't have genitals. They can't do anything. <laughs> Poor Ken. I do feel for him, but he just wants to feel loved by her. He's obsessed with her. Oh, she's got to do it again. She's not in... She's in a worse mood today. It's interesting. Could it be those thoughts of death? The song lyrics changed. Everything's different. Oh, I like this. I was wondering what the interruption of the status quo was going to be. I guess it's just her thoughts of like death and being depressed are affecting the world around her, you know? <laughs> Whoa. Oh, she can't keep her feet in the right position. Oh, she's panicking about not being perfect. It's like she can't, she can't be herself around anyone. I'm no longer on tiptoes. That's okay. Let me see. <laughs> <gasps> oh, you just made it so much worse. She's retching. <laughs> They're all retching. Stop it, Ken. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Kens are the best, man. I have never had to visit Weird Barbie. Weird Barbie? Why is she always in the splits? She's always in the splits. Because that's what little kids do to their Barbies. They always make them do the splits. Oh, her house is kind of cool, though. Hey. What's cooking good looking? Welcome to my weird house. Uh-huh. Oh, she's the most like free though. She's fun. Oh, oh, Kate McKinnon. That's a fun choice. I've heard of this. Of course, I didn't think it was possible. But it's She's got, what are those little, oh, what are those called? I used to make those all the time and do the fake future telling thing. That was so much fun. In the continuum, that is the membrane between Barbie land and, and the real world. And if you want to be stereotypical Barbie perfect again, then baby girl, you got to go fix it. Maybe she doesn't. You don't have to be. Maybe she'll real <gasps> cellulite. What is that? Uh, cellulite. That's going to spread what? everywhere. Everywhere. And sad and mushy and complicated. <laughs> Wait, this is amazing. This movie's amazing. And the girl who's playing with you, she must be sad. And her thoughts and feelings and humanness are interfering with your dullness. And you got to help her to help yourself. Oh, this is great. She's got to go help a little girl who's probably really depressed. <laughs> oh, I'm going to cry. You'll be such a hero to them. I'll bet every woman will say thank you and give you a really big hug. Uh-huh. They're totally going to do that. They're going to love you. Wow. I'm so excited for her to be in the real world. Closer I am to find. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God, Ken! The wrench in the plan, I love it. I made a double bet with Ken, and you can't make me look uncool in front of Ken. Ken's not cool! He is to me. You're just gonna slow me down. Just make out with the other Ken already. Did you bring your rollerblades? I literally go nowhere without them. <laughs> that was great delivery. Yay, road trip! <laughs> oh my God, this is such a vibe, y'all. Oh, okay, I see. They executed it all like this on a set with like a green screen. That's fun. That, that is cute. The Dutch outfits. Wow. See, maybe they'll actually, maybe she'll start to like him a little bit more. I don't know. Or maybe he'll gain a little confidence. This is the Venice beach scene. They made it to Venice. This is the one that was trending on Instagram like well over a year ago, I think. What's going on? Give us a smile, Blondie. 
Why are these men looking at me? Yeah, they're also staring at me. He's loving that. He's like, wow, people are looking at me. I love it here. <laughs> I feel what can only be described as admired, but not ogled. And there's no undertone of violence. Mine very much has an undertone of violence. Yeah. You guys are picking up on things very well. Everything's almost like reversed here. Yeah. Yeah. Ken's going to love it. Ken, you got to go to WeHo, man. You'll have a great time. Wow, the wind up to touch her butt. She got arrested! Ah! Ken, go for a walk or something. By myself? Yes. Really? Where? Anywhere. Can I go that way? Yes. <laughs> Ken, you gotta look where you're walking. Ken. Don't go far. Okay. Ken, just look where you're walking. <laughs> Ryan Gosling is so funny, man. Thanks, man. Everyone's gonna acknowledge him and notice him. He's gonna start to feel very cool, I think. Y'all, yeah, the men looking cool. So ah! He loves it here. He loves it here. A Hummer. Horses. Sheriffs. So I'm not worried about it. Not now, Margaret. Let's shake on this. We're oh, no. He's learning sexism. And I mean, not that that guy was necessarily sexist, but he was just rude. But he's learning. He's learning the behaviors of uh, a male-dominated society. All the men on the dollar bills. Beer. Golf. <laughs> Rushmore. <laughs> Baseball. Grease. <laughs> it's like uh it's like when an ai learns about human society that's what he's doing <laughs> he's gonna come back and start being mean to barbie <gasps> she can visualize the girl she can see her oh the little girl grew up so she's older oh she wanted to take oh she took the barbie out of the box and took it to goodwill or no oh oh she removed the barbie from goodwill because she knew her daughter cared about it oh Oh, and her daughter's getting all like closed off. Oh, this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be tough. She's got walls up. Oh, she's crying. I felt achy, but good. You had to cry? Uh-huh. Sometimes it's nice to cry. I would know. You're so beautiful. I know it. I love sassy old women. They're the gift to humanity. Seriously. Yes! I, I got, got it! it. Oh, oh, great. What do you got? You go first. No, no, no. You go. We'll go at the same time. Okay. Uh, Men, rule the Men rule the world. Men rule the world. I am happy that Ken has more confidence. I just hope he can, like, find it within himself without needing to, like, rule the world, you know, or be in charge. Like, maybe no gender should rule the world and it can just be equality. Oh, America Ferreira? Is she the designer? It's irrepressible thoughts of death, Barbie. Full body cellulite, Barbie. Crippling shame, Barbie. Is that the mom? Because we didn't see the mom's face of the daughter. That's, it's the mother, isn't it? Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Oh, she's the secretary. Maybe not. It could be her mom. I don't know. It's just my guess, but. An imagination. Oh, Will Ferrell, I forgot about Will Ferrell. This, he's a great CEO. This is awesome. Sounds like a job for the box. No one rests until this doll. Oh, we're putting her in the box. No. We needed an antagonist, so this is great. Now we have an antagonistic force. There she is. This girl's not going to give a shit about her. Come on, Sasha. Give it to her. Destroy Barbie. Destroy Barbie. Okay, Barbie. Let's do this. Well, they, I th it's like they believe that she's Barbie, but they're just like, you suck. You destroy girls' innate sense of worth, and you are killing the planet with your glorification of rampant consumerism. No, I'm supposed to help you and make you happy and powerful. <laughs> oh, I am powerful. And until you showed up here and declared yourself Barbie, I hadn't thought about you in years, you fascist. Fascist! Oh, my God. Oh. Um. Okay. <laughs> It's happening again. It's happening again. She's like, what is this feeling? So sudden and new. Why men rule literally. Horses. <laughs> I, oh my God, dude. I love Ken. Why didn't Barbie tell me about patriarchy? Which, to my understanding, is where men and horses run everything. Sure. Sure. Not horses, but sure. I mean, yeah, horses are important. I'll go back to Barbie land and I'll tell the Kens what I've learned. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Oh, wow, goody. Yeah, spread the patriarchy, Ken. Have fun. Hi, bunny boo-boo. Don't call me that. It was her mom. I knew it. It's interesting because her mom's been the one coming up with the ideas of like thoughts of death Barbie. And I think the daughter wasn't the one that Barbie needed to speak to. I think Barbie needed to find America Ferrera. You know what? We should probably get Ken first. Ken. Ken. 
you know, Ken, Barbie and Ken. <coughs> yes, Ken, get the guy. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even remember Ken. He's on his way back. Ken's about to mess everything up. Ken isn't something we're worried about ever. Ever? I'll get in the box then. All right. Yes. <laughs> wow, thank God Ken got away. He's going to remember what happened. Every single one of these men love women. Uh -huh. I'm the son of a mother. Okay. I'm the mother of a son. No. I'm, I'm the nephew of a woman aunt. A woman aunt. Some of my best friends are Jews. <laughs> I love Will Ferrell, man. That was so funny. Oh, the twisty ties. Oh, hi. She can't handle it. She's panicking. I worry that like when they tie her up in the box, it's not going to be like sending her back to Barbie land. It's like putting her out of commission. She's running. I'm gaining on you. They're all running in choreographed movements, honestly. Oh my god, they're all running in different directions. This is so great, man. This movie is such a comedic vibe. What? Where is this? Oh, who's this sweet little old lady? You look different. Oh, well, that's not how I normally look. I usually look perfect. Oh, I don't know. I think you're just right. Yeah, I mean, you look great. Thank you. Um, Ruth. Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. You're welcome, Barbie. That was the most wholesome scene ever, man. That was like a nice little comforting respite and a nice little moment for her character to be like, oh, maybe being real and having cellulite and looking not perfect isn't bad because like this woman doesn't look perfect and she's beautiful and like happy and so kind. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's the one you were supposed to talk to. Get in now. Come on. Barbie, run. Oh my God, yes, she was the one. Oh, they had a little magical moment. Did any of these drawings by chance have thoughts of death and cellulite? Yes! <gasps> I came, came for you. you! Yeah, oh, I'm gonna cry, yeah. Yeah, I knew it, I knew it the whole time. I mean, not the whole, whole time, but most of the time. Oh, God, it's really about the mother. Yeah, the daughter didn't even care about Barbie. She was just so focused on the kid in those thoughts because it made sense, you know? Wake up, Mom! I am wide awake, Sasha! Yeah, girl! Oh, sh Where did you have to drive like this? There was this guy. His dad? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was dad. There was this guy. It was not dad. <laughs> How did we get into these clothes? How did we get into this vehicle? Sasha's gonna have to have some fun and put a smile on that face at some point. You can't resist this. This is too, too fun. This is what I was supposed to do for you back here. It feels right. It does. Aw, she looks happy. I have a feeling she wasn't supposed to do it, but... Oh, no! The patriarchy is spreading! And that's... Oh my God, he turned it into horses. He really got to work. Barbie, I'm so happy to see you. Can you believe what is happening? I know, isn't it great? A lot of the Barbies like it. They want a break. I like being a helpful decoration. And Alan likes to help me give all the Ken's foot massage. Yeah, like some of the women want to be in charge and have roles. Some women don't. Some men want to, some men don't. Oh my God, this is like in the 1500s with the indigenous people in smallpox. They had no defenses against it. Yeah. That's a really good comparison, honestly, ma'am. Because Barbie land, it's now Ken land. Oh no. No, no, no. They don't have it figured out in Century City because we failed them. No, you failed me. Oh, his emotions coming out now. Wait. I just noticed his Ken fanny pack too. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Ken's experience is so interesting and like important, I think, to have in this movie because I feel like it parallels a lot of kids nowadays, like young boys who are growing up who feel isolated and neglected and looked down upon just for being men, but then told that they have all the power and then not really having any power because they're young boys and resenting women for it. It's it's such a valuable experience to put in this movie, man. How's that feel? Oh. It is not fun, is it? Oh, he's getting a lot of joy out of inflicting that pain on her because he felt so rejected in the beginning when she kicked him out. He still wants to kiss her, though. He still loves her. He still loves her. But he's, like, been wounded, and now he's putting these walls up. Every night is boys' night. <laughs> Two pairs of sunglasses? Oh, poor Barbie, man. She a wreck.
Please huh? just leave me here. Just leave me. Go back to your messed up world and just leave me to mine. Oh. So you're just going to give up? Yes. She's stereotypical Barbie. This is really hard for her. This is the lowest I've ever been. I think it makes sense that stereotypical Barbie would crumble under like something going wrong like this because she's the stereotypical Barbie, you know? Like, so she was the first one. So it's got to all be up to her to fix everything. But at the same time, she just wants things to go back to the way they were, like the stereotypical way. And. Turn this song up a break! Alan! He hates the song too. As soon as they figure out how to build that wall sideways and not just up, no one is going to be able to get in or out. They're trying to build a wall. I'm, uh, I'm Ken's buddy. Yeah. All his clothes fit me. <laughs> All his clothes fit me. <laughs> Alan! Yeah! He's a baddie. We have to go back. Barbie Land needs saving. Barbie gave up. The Ken's won. <laughs> you have to try, even if it. Oh, Sasha's like, everyone's got to try and not be so hopeless. When was the last time they did that? Get out of here. Yeah, Alan, I'm sorry, man. Poor Alan. I'm not pretty anymore. Babe, you're still gorgeous. What the f are you talking about? What are you talking about? Not stereotypical Barbie pretty. Note to the filmmakers, Margot Robbie is the wrong person to cast if you want to make this point. Alan! Helen! Helen! That, I've missed the narrator. We hadn't heard from her in a while. That was a perfect, perfect moment for her to come back. I've never flown a plane. Honey, you couldn't do any of those things anyway. I'm not the president. So she's saying because I'm not stereotypically pretty anymore, I don't have anything. I'm not good enough for anything. Oh, damn, that's real, bro. That's like the realest shit ever. Like you have to be thin, but not too thin. And you can never say you want to be thin. You have yeah, to, you just you to be, wanna be healthy. Yeah, and you have to also be effortlessly thin, but pretend like you eat a lot so you're a cool girl, you know? You have to be a boss, but you can't be mean. You have to lead, but you can't squash other people's ideas. Oh, she's gonna break. She's gonna break the brainwashing. Wait. Well, she had an idea. I did write a book. Yeah, babe. Yeah, you snapped her out of it. In a dream where I was somehow really invested in the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. <laughs> You're back. She's back. This movie is so f***ing funny. Tomorrow, the Kens vote to change the Constitution. So we have to get there first. The final stage of our plan, to turn the Kens against each other. Smart! Smart! You make them question whether they have enough power over each other. And then maybe we could turn this Barbie land into a Barbie and Ken and Allen land, where it's a, a true democracy and equality, and maybe we just let people do what they want to do. I'm ready to be your long-term distance, low commitment, casual girlfriend, if you'll still have me. Oh, he's gonna be so excited. We're, I do feel bad for him despite all the awful shit he's done. Cause it just, Sublime! it stemmed from a, <laughs> it stemmed from a place of feeling downtrodden and not appreciated and overlooked and not loved, not having anything of value to bring to the table. Like it's a very real insecurity for a lot of dudes. It's kind of embarrassing, y'all, but I actually do like Rob Thomas. I liked Rob Thomas. Am I Ken? They all are playing it. I mean, it's kind of the perfect song, paralleling what's going on with the Kens. Like, I want to take you for granted. I want to push you down. <laughs> Who are you texting? Oh, yeah, that's a great way to get in his head. <laughs> Ken! Sorry, one second. It's a beautiful song that you're playing. It's the same song. Oh my God. They're all just switching. We attack at 10 o'clock and take advantage of the morning waves. But not so early, cause we're gonna wanna sleep in. Right. Right. Oh my God. I feel like there are more screens of horses every time we go to this house. There's just more and more screens of horses running. I'm always number two. It's finally time for the Ken number. Oh my God, his comforter, his horses. I forgot he had a horse necklace on too. Man, he's obsessed. He's like the horse girl, but instead a horse man. <laughs> wow! The horse boat, everything. They're having a beach off! Is it 
time for a little Grease Lightning style number? Yes, it is! That's exactly what it's time for! Rock, paper, scissors! The amount of musical numbers and choreography and actors that they needed for this, like, they could turn this movie into a Broadway musical and it, you wouldn't even have to adjust anything. Oh, that's really cute. It went from a war into a wholesome little number. That was today, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Say I. I think she's she's not totally happy. I think she's starting to feel bad for Ken too and like and all the men as well. Like I think she's probably realizing that like just all one gender being in charge is not enough. Like <laughs> Don't look at me. Oh, Ken. Poor baby. Poor baby. He's so fragile. And those mini fridges are so small. Mm -hmm. You can only fit a six-pack in them, and the freezers <laughs> are basically useless. Uh-huh, yeah. He went through his bachelor pad phase, you know? It wasn't about horses. I lost interest anyway. Oh, really? You just... <laughs> that makes so much sense, because he's obsessed with the horse aesthetic. I think I owe you an apology. Yeah. I'm really sorry I took you for granted. Yeah. Not every night had to be girls' night. Yeah. I only exist within the warmth of your gaze. That's really depressing, man. Without it, I'm just another blonde guy who can't do flips. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Ryan Gosling needs an Oscar, like, right now. You're not your house. You're not your mink. Beach? No. You're not even beach. <laughs> Maybe all the things <laughs> that you thought made you you aren't really you. It's like she's saying that to herself too. She just had that realization for herself as well. I wonder how things are going in the real world now. Oh yes, there he is. Ah! Oh, Mitch. Gosh, I thought we discontinued her. Leave her alone. Jesus Christ. What about Barbie? What do you mean? What's her ending? What does she get? I love how they're all Barbie, but we just know. We just know we're all talking about that Barbie. I'm not really sure where I belong anymore. I don't think I have an ending. That was always the point. Ruth! You wouldn't have an ending. Oh, she created her? Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Ruth Handler, inventor of Barbie. Yeah, I knew Barbie was invented by a woman, but I didn't even think that that could be her. Come, walk with me. Oh my God. <laughs> Why are they all slow motion waving? Thank you. Oh, when did he get the sweater? You understand that humans only have one ending. Ideas live forever. Humans, not so much. You know that, right? I do. Is she gonna be human? Is that possible? And then you die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she wants to die, I think. She's like, well, not like now, but I think she likes the idea of there being pain, like when she was sitting on the bench and taking all those emotions and sounds in. Do you give me permission to become human? You don't need my permission. But you're the creator. You Don't you control me? Aww. I can't control you any more than I could control my own daughter. I named you after her. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> stop. I don't need to cry more. Oh, she's gone. Oh my god. I wonder what she's gonna do in the real world. For the pastels and plastics of Los Angeles. Right, exactly. Oh, she's being helped by Sasha and her mom. Oh! Muy orgulloso de ti. Orgulloso. <laughs> Great job, Dad. Dad's back. Yay! Spanish is slightly improving. Si se puede. Yes, you can! Oh, f Oh, f I don't know. Sorry. Name? Oh, um... Handler, comma, Barbara. Oh, Handler is her last name? And what are you here for today, Barbara? I'm here to see my gynecologist. <laughs> I'm crying and laughing at the same time, because that was so funny and real. 
Holy sh**. I'm glad I watched this movie when I did. And I'm actually really impressed with a lot of the messaging that was in this movie. Cause I do feel like a lot of times, especially with like <clears throat> recent media and pop culture, there's a lot of messaging for women that like, you need to be powerful and perfect and be a girl boss and be able to do it all. And also be this loving and caring mom. And also, you know, look great. And everything that America Ferrera was saying in her speech, like is all true. And a lot of that messaging gets perpetuated by a lot of mainstream media and movies where there's all this pressure like put on a, a woman needs to you know be a badass female lead be sexy be able to rule be great at everything and she can't depend on a man for anything because that's horrible and it really just creates this divide between men and women where a lot of men feel like they're talked down to or you know just treated like they don't matter and it's also tough because like historically men have had it easier especially like here in american society but at the same time, there's been a shift in recent years where a lot of young boys are being raised to like have this resentment towards women because of media and because of culture ragging on men in a different way than ever before. And it just creates a divide between these two genders when there shouldn't be a divide there. Like people should really be supporting one another and uplifting one another and treating each other with kindness and equality. And obviously you're gonna have people that don't do that for sure, but it's really not about men versus women at all. It's about like the messaging, especially like a lot of these larger corporations who will take advantage of that messaging and try to use it to make a profit. A really great example is like the new Snow White movie that they're I think revamping now because <laughs> all the things that have come out about it are <laughs> not, it's not doing so well. <laughs> in the media, but a lot of people are upset, you know, seeing all these interviews for this new Snow White live action movie and um, seeing the lead actress talking about how oh, Snow White doesn't need a man and this isn't 1940 anymore and um, she's not waiting on her prince to come, you know, she wants to be the queen and a lot of people are like, hey, some people just want their prince to come and that's okay. Like a lot of people live in this world where is hard man like stuff is hard nowadays it's such an expensive world we live in people are struggling to make ends meet and a lot of people at the end of the day they just want to be happy and for some people being happy means having like the best career and being successful in their job for others it means just being healthy and having good relationships with family and friends for others it means finding that person and like finding that true love of their life and not feeling so alone anymore. And I really love that this movie touched on that. Like you don't have to have it all. You don't have to be perfect. And like acknowledged also the hurt and the pain and that overlooked feeling that these men are experiencing as well. It really did a great job exploring both sides of the coin. And I really liked that. And I love that like Barbie was really struggling with her whole journey, especially in the middle there, because she just didn't know how to be anything but stereotypical Barbie. And she realized, that once she couldn't be that anymore, she felt like she had absolutely nothing to offer, which is also a really common experience for so many people. I mean, I feel like that all the time. I feel like the older I get, you know, the less conventionally attractive I am. Not that I'm like... <laughs> I'm nowhere near Margot Robbie's looks, you know what I mean? But I'm just saying like, you feel this pressure to look young or to look a certain way, especially as a woman, you definitely feel that, especially online with an internet presence. And you feel like the older you get, those looks are only ever gonna fade. And so you start to feel like, well, people won't care about me as much in that respect and they'll stop watching. Or if I don't have something unique to offer, like I'm not particularly smart in a certain subject or I'm not particularly talented, like what do I have to offer? And I feel like that's such a common, insecurity amongst so many people nowadays, especially younger generations who are spending more and more time on the internet. You see all these other people who appear like they have it all together, appear like they've got everything or appear like they have talent, or maybe they do, maybe they have talent in a certain field. And maybe you feel like you don't because you're either young and you haven't honed those skills yet, or maybe you just feel like you aren't able to and you spend most of your time on the internet. It's a really valid insecurity and fear for a lot of people to feel like they don't have anything to offer the world. And if they stop fitting into a certain mold, or bubble, they won't 
be accepted or liked or appreciated by anyone. It's really sad. And I liked that journey for her a lot. I also liked the fact that, you know, Ken is this character who really was only created after Barbie was already in existence. And so he does feel like he can only exist for the validation of Barbie. And there are, there are plenty of men out there who like really do live a lot of their lives, like trying to like get a girlfriend. And when they don't, they start to resent women and like live a lot of their ethos based off of that resentment towards women. Obviously, this is like a smaller subset of men. It's not the majority of men, but there definitely are people like that. There are women like that too, who live their life around the validation from others and validation from men. So I just really like the theme themes that were explored in this movie and I feel like they did a really great job showing how this cultural problem that's been perpetuated over the course of many years has really started to negatively affect not only women but also men and it's just hard and it just sucks and like maybe we can all just recognize that we're all individuals and we all have something to offer and maybe try to lift one another up and not just like further that divide. It was really beautiful. I do feel like this is one of those movies that I will look forward to rewatching, especially because having to do commentary over it and talk over it, like I do feel like there were some little subtleties and moments and nuances that I definitely missed. I also loved the whole Ken number. I had heard I am Kenuff, like I am enough uh, a couple times and I'd seen that sweater on social media, but I didn't really know the number. I knew there was going to be a number. I just didn't know what was gonna be in it. And I think it was just really beautiful. It really encapsulated so well the validation that he was seeking from Barbie and really trying to convince himself that he is enough just by being Ken, but was still struggling to do it because he'd lived his whole life seeking that validation and all that anger and resentment and sadness that had built up inside of him as well. It was just a really awesome number to demonstrate his character. I also love that like the most childish character in the entire movie was the CEO of Mattel. Like that was such a funny little choice. Will Ferrell did such a great job playing that part, just his little temper tantrums and his little noises of protest and trying to catch Barbie. I think this movie was so comedic and I knew it would be funny to a certain extent, but it really was a lot funnier than I was actually anticipating. And I think that's why like I cried in the end because her going to the gynecologist is like such a happy moment for her. And I thought she was going in for for an interview like she looked like she was dressed for an interview and she's going and she's just happy to have a vagina and be human and go to a gynecological appointment like <laughs> that was so funny and it and also made me so emotional because like that really is like such a such an annoying part of being a woman quite frankly is having to deal with your vagina and like going to a gynecologist <laughs> So it's so funny that she was so excited about it i'm also watching this movie on my period so i'm extra emotional <laughs> Anyway, I'm really glad I finally got to watch this movie with all of y'all. I think it was really sweet, really beautiful. And I am curious to see if they will probably try to turn this into a musical for Broadway. I do feel like that might happen. I'm just saying that because I feel like everything becomes a musical nowadays, especially when there's like great IP. We've had SpongeBob the musical. We've had Back to the Future on Broadway. I mean, we've had so many shows and movies that were really popular, had fan bases that were turned into musicals. This movie already has a lot of musical elements to it, a lot of great choreography, um, some fun musical numbers. It would just need a few more, quite honestly. You would just need to write like maybe five or six more songs and you would have a full-blown musical at this point. It already really fits the aesthetic. I mean, half of the blocking was already set pieces being moved by other Barbies and characters, which already fits that theater movement vibe. So I really do feel like they will turn this into a movie, a musical on Broadway, and um, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest. I actually think I would go see that, which I can't say for all of the movies that are turned into musicals on Broadway. Also, this is crazy. I'm just realizing, I think this is the first Greta Gerwig film I've ever watched. I never got around to watching Little Women. I never got around to watching Lady Bird. Um, I think this is the first film of hers that I've scene and I really did enjoy it. I think it was super cohesive. From start to finish, it just felt like there was nothing extra about it. Everything felt necessary to the story. No loose ends really felt like they needed to be tied up or could have been cut out for time. It just felt like very well thought out, well put together. Even some of the secondary characters that were in the movie really added to the world in such a beautiful and fun way. I loved Weird Barbie, man. I really did. I think Weird Barbie was probably my favorite just because I'm weird and I like 
weird, confident people. I also loved Alan. Of course, Alan is great. Uh, but I just think this world felt really fleshed out. And I think Greta Gerwig did a fantastic job with the creation and direction of this. Also, let me know who your favorite Barbie was in the comments down below from this movie. I definitely loved a lot of them, but Weird Barbie is going to stay my favorite just because I love a weird girl. I just do. <laughs> and if you guys liked this video, please give it a thumbs up so that I know and I can check out more stuff like this in the future with all of y'all. Of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below or anything else you might like me to check out next and subscribe if you want to. Till the next one, stay golden. Bye.